Okay, you know when you're doing so, you're making something, and you know that you're making a mistake as you do it, but you think, oh, this will just save time, and then it doesn't save time. That's what's happened to me. So let's fix it. Hi there, everyone. My name is Zach, and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I'm a reenactor and a jouster, and at the moment, my shed workshop is kind of taken over by a whole load of different projects, and I think I need to actually work hard on one to get it finished. So here we have my scabbard. Now you might remember if you've been subscribed, if you're not subscribed, then subscribe. Uh, you might remember that I made this scabbard a while ago. Um, it broke, so I had to remake it. I've added a linen underlining and then a leather core and I dyed it. What Thiebings, um says on the bottle is dark red and it is definitely not dark red. Um, this is much more of a bright pink kind of color. And as fabulous as it is, my research shows that this is not an authentic color. So, um, this is not correct for the 15th century. It is very difficult to get a leather dye in this color in the 15th century. So we need to do something about that. Now in the introduction to this video, I said that I made a mistake and I kind of knew I was making a mistake as I did it, but I tried to just carry on and style it out and it didn't quite work. Now the mistake was that whenever you're doing leather work, you should always, 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 always do a swatch with your leather dye. Mm. Dyeing anything is not quite the same as painting. Uh, paint sits on top of something. So this shield here, which was painted by my very good friend, George, um, this is painted with authentic oil paints and it's got um, gold leaf. Now, both of those things, they sit on top of the surface underneath. Dyeing is different to this in that it actually seeps into whatever you are dyeing. So you will get a different color you will pretty much always get a different color depending on what you are putting it onto. So what I should have done is taken a scrap of leather like this one from the actual making of the scabbard because you'll always have offcuts and I should have done a test dye on it. And that would have shown me that that dye on this leather is not the color that I want. Um, I didn't do that. I should have done. Now I'm in the situation where I just basically it it's not broken. I don't need to start again. Okay. This is um a, a lot of the time when you first make a mistake, you think, oh no, I'm like all of that time is wasted. I'm gonna have to start all over again. You don't need to start all over again very often. Um now leather will sometimes take an over dye. Um, if I was going for a lighter color, that would be a bigger problem. So in order to rescue this project, I'm going to go for a darker color. So I've got a black here um, and I've tested this on the, um, on the leather strip. But what I've also done is I've tested it over the top of the red. Um, or in this case, pink. So I know that this is going to go over the top. So that's what I'm gonna to do today. Hopefully, by the end of the day, I'll have a black scabbard and I'll be able to finally attach the shape onto the end of it. All right, let's go. Dyeing leather can be incredibly messy. So making sure that your workspace is clear-ish um, or certainly you know doesn't have anything that you don't mind getting a bit messy on it um, is really important also before I did this I made sure that I clipped my fingernails and put on some gloves um, you don't want the fingernails to come through the gloves because then you'll end up dyeing your hands and leather dye is extremely good at dyeing hands um, because your hands are, and leather are very similar. Um, so yeah, 
um, make sure you've got gloves, make sure your nails aren't going to make holes in them. Um, here I've left the sword in the scabbard so that I've got something to hold on to and move it around. You can see as well that I'm transferring the leather die to a shorter, wider container. Um, that's because it's easier to get the dye out of it and it's less likely to cause a spillage and put the lid back on as well. Um, this is all, these, these mistakes are all ones that I have made in the past, so you don't have to. Um, now you may have noticed that I wet down the leather there before applying the black dye over the top. Um, this helps the dye to move across the le leather. Um, you can oil the leather if you do have a decent oil. There's various things that you, you can do and, and there are much better tutorials on YouTube um, on how to do that. This is kind of less of a tutorial and more just how I did it. But you can see the black is going over the top quite nicely. Now, one of the issues with over dyeing, um, over dyeing was definitely done historically in period, but there's only so much dye that a piece of leather can take. Um, this particular piece of leather had already had two um, coats of the red dye. Um, I was hoping that the second coat might dull it down somewhat. So it has received two coats already. So it's not accepting the black quite as nicely as you would like. But actually, as I said before, over dyeing is definitely something that happened in period. And especially for blacks as well, because a black is a color that you can make um, you can make leather dye for a black color quite natu naturally, quite easily, but it's not very color fast. So people would um, would make it by over dyeing with multiple different dyes to create a black color. Um, in the end, this actually turns out with a really nice, really dark purple, um, purple black. Um, this is because obviously the original color is red and the black that I'm putting over the top is a very cool black. It's actually an incredibly dark blue. Um, so it does create what I think is a really nice, um, very, very, very dark purple. Um, once it's taken some wear, I'll probably end up dyeing it over with black again and might even end up with a, a different finish. But this is um, the kind of thing that you would have in the 15th century. You wouldn't have factory finish. You wouldn't expect two pieces of leather that have been dyed uh, and made in the same workshop. Or, you know, you wouldn't be expecting to get exactly the same color on all of your pieces of equipment uh, because that just doesn't happen with natural dyes. It doesn't happen um, with use because things um, fade with use, um, natural dyes especially, faster than chemical dyes. So yeah, there we go. I've applied all of that with a sponge, but what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to turn it over. And I don't know if you can see there, but down the stitch line, the sponge has had difficulty getting into all of stitches so I'm going to take a brush this is just a normal paintbrush and I'm just going to feed some black down that stitch line just to now if I was over dyeing something in the period I don't know that I would do this because this is an basically not something that anyone would see um, and Todd and uh, Matt have both done very good. Matt Easton from Scholar Editoria have both done some very good videos recently 
talking about imperfections in medieval craftsmanship and how um, they often didn't worry about making the parts that weren't going to be seen or weren't going to be seen up close. They didn't make them perfect which is very useful for me because I am not perfect at this. I think this is one of those aspects where the medieval mindset and the modern mindset are quite at odds with each other because I feel like the idea of getting something absolutely perfect to a medieval person is as alien to them as leaving imperfections in is to us, especially when we're talking about high-end things. I think when it comes down to it, the use of time, you know, if you, if you look at something and you go, right, well, if I spend 30 hours on this, then it will be finished. Obviously not a scabbard. A scabbard would take less time than that. But if I, if I spend 30 hours on it, it will be finished. But if I spend 60 hours on it, it will be finished and a little bit better. Then I think a lot of people would just go, yeah, but what's the point? Like, it's finished. Like, the, the idea of it needing to be completely perfect is not really there. Okay, now I don't know if you can see this, you can definitely see a red look coming through. Now I'm going to go over the top with just a dry paper towel, which is going to take off any remaining dye. And yes, it is leaving it slightly more red, but actually, I quite like it. Yeah, what do you think? I'm very pleased with that. I think that looks 10 times better. Okay, so here we have it. Here's the, um, the black leather scabbard now. And here I have a shape. And this goes on the end of the scabbard. And um, this one I got from Todd's stuff quite a while ago now, I think, um, yeah, I think again, it's uh, at least five years old, but I know that he still does sell these. Um, now this is to go on the end of the scabbard, like so, and you can see I've kind of forced it on before to mark out where it's going to go to, and I've died beyond that as well. Okay. Now, what I don't want to do is just glue this to the um, to the leather because that will make it easy to come off, which we don't want to do. Um, I'm not going to be using animal glue or um, authentic applications for this. Basically, um, nothing else about this is particularly an authentic build. If you'd like to see me do one of those in future, then leave a comment down below and sign up for my Patreon so that you can help fund that sort of thing. <laughs> um, but uh, um, yeah, so here's what I'm thinking. I'm going to trim back this leather to a bit closer so that then I can get a bond both between the leather and the brass and the wood and the brass. And then I'm also going to drill a little hole in the back here so that I can put a pin through uh, and basically nail it on as well. Okay.
Right, so we don't want this to go so far through that it comes out the front. That's what we don't want to do. So we're going to clip it and resharpen it. All of this work that I'm doing, I've got, um, I've got goggles on. So, uh, a friend of mine once got a red hot metal shaving in his eye. Don't do that. That's not a good thing. It's not something you want. Just get a little bit of five minute epoxy, and I'm going to put some gloves on again because you don't want that on your fingers. We're getting towards finished with this. It's been a long time coming, but we're getting there. So this is a two part epoxy. Basically, it's fine until you mix it, and then when you mix it, you've got five minutes to apply it and stick, and it will continue to stick after that time. <sighs> Should have got something ready to stir it with. This was supposed to be the part where. I don't make any mistakes and I plan everything beforehand. It's supposed to be. Here we go. So what I'm doing is I'm only applying it around the edge where of this leather here. I'm not going to put it right up to the point. Where I'm not going to do it right up to the edge of that point because I don't want loads of it to squeeze out. And a little bit of it is squeezed out anyway. Really apply that on hard, wipe away the excess before it hardens. And then I'm going to get, oh, I hope you saw that. Then I'm just going to get my little pin here. Yeah. And we're going to hammer that in. Let's get rid of that. When I was filming this, I didn't realize that hammering onto the same table that my camera was attached to might cause problems. Um, I have therefore cut out this little bit of footage to save you from a headache as the camera rapidly auto focuses um, with every hammer blow. And now I'm just going to. Peen that over. Same problem. Maybe I need to find a way of attaching the camera to the ceiling. Wipe it again. There we go. Right, I'm going to leave that to dry and then we should have a finished scabbard. And here we have the finished scabbard. It's been a long time. Um, I'm really happy with it. As you can see in the outside shots, um, it's not a pure black. In some places, it's a lot more purple than others. Um, 
but this color is a lot more um, natural looking. It, it's definitely achievable with natural dyes. Um, maybe I'll do a video on natural dyes in the future. If you want that, leave me a comment down below. Um, I'm really pleased with this. It's not perfect, but it definitely looks medieval. And um, that's the aim of this. If you've enjoyed this video and you're not subscribed, then make sure that you're subscribed. If you want to support the channel even further, you can find a link to my Patreon in the description down below. And there's actually the raw footage of this over on my Patreon. Thank you very much, especially to my night level Patreons. These guys get a shout out in all my videos. So thank you to Sirloin de Boeuf, to Robert, to Carrie, to Nightly underscore Lady, to Seth, and to We Lou. Thank you guys. Uh, thank you everyone for watching and hopefully I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye.